Keep going, keep going. Often referred to as the Wagyu of salmon, Copper River King salmon can cost up to $120 per pound. It's like retail price, $1,500, $2,000 right here. That's six times as much as other wild salmon and 10 times more than farmed salmon. This salmon is extremely rare to come by. For fishers in Cordova, Alaska, it means spending entire days in dangerous waters, using life-threatening equipment and spending thousands of dollars on a permit all with the serious chance of coming back to port empty-handed. So is Copper River King Salmon worth the challenge? And why is it so expensive? King Salmon, also called Chinook Salmon, is one of the five species of wild Pacific salmon swimming through the Alaskan waters. The Copper River King is the largest and most nutritious of them all. The color of the Copper River Salmon is just so vibrant. It's such a deep, deep red. And it's like one of those things when you see it, it's very obvious that that's a Copper River Salmon. And it just tastes so buttery. It's amazing. Kyle and his crew set sail in the early hours of the morning from the Cordova Harbor. It will take them two hours to reach the delta of the Copper River. King salmon will stay in the Copper River delta for only three to six weeks. Kings are the first wild salmon of the season, and the start of the season is unpredictable. Although it roughly always falls around mid-May, fishers won't know it's time to set sail until less than a day before. We typically have such a short window to fish. It's really important for me to be able to make quick decisions. Go, go, go. The unpredictable outcome of each fishing run not only affects the price of each catch, but also builds up the excitement. We're, that's insane. That's insane. The location is the first challenge for Kyle and his crew. The delta of the river is very large, and not a lot of salmon swim in that area. So fishers like Kyle have to take their boats to shallow waters. It's extremely dangerous to fish for a Copper River King Salmon because they like to hang out in shallow waters. And when you're fishing in that area, you're a lot more exposed to mother nature. You know, the waves are crushing, they're breaking on top of you and you're a lot more susceptible uh, to capsizing your boat. Um, we're about to pick our anchor and then we're gonna uh, make a set. Once the anchor is set, the chances of catching anything are slim. King salmon makes up only a small percentage of the salmon in the Copper River. 90% is sockeye. That makes Kyle's job extremely difficult. Aside from that, local laws require he uses specific nets called gill nets. They're hung vertically to catch the fish by their gills. Gill netting is an extremely effective way to catch these fish because each net is hand-built and completely customized. So, you know, for Copper River King Salmon, we use a lot, a lot larger mesh size, around six inches. So the smaller fish swim right through it. And, you know, when we are able to locate a King Salmon, they fit perfectly in our net. King, King. <laughs> Give me a second, I'll, I'll explain in a second. Should have pulled him over the fing bow. Ah. So what had happened was, you know, so king salmon, they're they're really large fish and they typically don't really get stuck into the net. They usually just wrap up. Um, so it's imperative that you have a dip net to catch them in case they pop out. And what had happened there was it was the first king of the day. I was super, super excited. I had the net underneath and it had already peaked and started to crown over the bow roller. And I, uh, I tried to reach forward to pull it over, but because that it popped off and I was only holding the dip net with one hand and because the king was so large, it overpowered me and it ended up swimming out. But the same features that make gill nets such an effective way to catch king salmon are also what make using them so dangerous. There are a lot of hazards and dangers using a gill net, specifically on deck for the crew. 
just because we are using hydraulic equipment to send the net out into the water. There's a lot of loose mesh that goes flying out. So any, you know, loose strings from a hoodie or shoelaces, all those are really prone to getting snagged. Mist catches are common here in the Copper River. Even after spending his whole day out on the boat, Kyle has a serious chance of coming back empty-handed. That makes the fish that he does catch even more prized. Oh, yeah, go, go. Oh, Woo. We just caught this toad of a Copper River King Salmon. This one probably weighs uh, probably 30, 35 pounds. Um, and for like retail price, we, you know, this goes like $1,500, $2,000 right here. And um, just for a size comparison, this is uh, a Copper River sockeye salmon. Yeah, it's got a darker mouth. And then also on top of the spine, you'll see it's got spots along the line and also this nice silver um, with spots on the tail as well. So this one right here is probably 22 pounds gross. Um, it's a very beautiful, um, very fatty Copper River King salmon. Um, very excited that we got the first, the first one on board. Uh, day's getting started and uh, looking forward to catching many more. The huge size of the Copper River King salmon is due to its migration. Wild salmon are born in freshwater streams like the Copper River and then migrate to the ocean as juveniles. After spending most of their lives at sea, they return to their home to spawn. For the kings returning to the Copper River, this means enduring a 300 mile long journey against a seven mile per hour current, swimming between glaciers and gaining 3,600 feet in elevation. Copper River salmon have the most intense salmon migratory route out of any salmon in the world. Because of that long journey home, it has a huge impact on the flavor of the copper of salmon. Because the moment the salmon enter, you know, they go from the ocean, the seawater, and they hit that fresh water of the copper river salmon, their body automatically changes into reproductive mode. So up until that day that they hit that fresh water, they're just feeding and building up fat to make that 300 mile long journey. Go, 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 go. Nice. 39,000 kings are set to return home to the Copper River this year, 13% below the 10-year average of 46,000. Out of these 39,000, fisheries are only permitted to catch less than half to ensure enough salmon make it up the river for future generations. Kyle is only allowed to go out once enough salmon have escaped the fishing ground and have started to make their way up the Copper River. The catch limit is different every day, it can be reached at any moment. And when it is, Kyle has to stop fishing and return to port immediately. But he still needs to bring home enough to keep his business running. And fishing in the Copper River bears high costs. If I came back empty handed, it would cost me, you know, it could be anywhere from 300 to $600 in fuel and probably a chunk of my pride. <laughs> For a company like Kyle's, fuel can top $12,000 a season, but that's still significantly lower than the cost of a permit to commercially fish in these waters, which is $250,000. When I first started commercial fishing, I did not save any of my catch for myself. Just because I had taken on so much debt to buy into the fishery, I couldn't afford to save any of the salmon for myself. I eat salmon very regularly now. <laughs> All right, come in, come, come. Okay. Yeah, come, come. Oh. Oh. Holy shit. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Oh my God, that's insane. Last seven of the day, we just brought in seven Copper River Kings, insane. 
We're all, yeah. We're Dude, all. that was bonkers. Once Kyle returns to port, the fish must be filleted and packaged as soon as possible to preserve its nutritional value. It takes us about a week to get our salmon to consumers. The moment our fishermen return to port, we'll fillet, portion, vacuum pack, and flash freeze for a minimum of three days. So then that way the seafood is uh, consumable for sushi, is considered sushi grade. They're so fatty, it's so oily, it's hard to hold on to them, they keep slipping. Kyle sells his king salmon to fine dining and sushi restaurants, but also directly to customers across the country. Shipping out of Alaska can get very expensive because of its remote location. It costs him $65 to ship a five pound box of salmon from Cordova to New York. Due to an increase in demand, the price of king salmon has slowly gone up over the last five years. A pound of Copper River king salmon is now going for $100 to $120. Although bigger fish sell for more, huge king salmon are getting harder to come by. A 2020 study found that in the last 60 years, salmon in Alaska have been getting smaller, especially kings. Since 1960, king salmon have lost 8% in body length. Streams are warming earlier in the year and salmon are making their migrations at a younger age and smaller size. There's also competition with other fish populations caused by hatcheries releasing the fish they produce into the sea. In the long term, this drop in size affects the salmon's commercial value, the transport of nutrients, egg production, and especially for king salmon, it reduces the supply for rural communities. Salmon and seafood in Alaska is more than just uh, like more than a job. It's very deeply rooted into our traditions. We have very many rural communities in Alaska that rely on these wild salmon runs as like their only source of protein. So, you know, they don't have, you know, some of them, they don't have access to grocery stores. So it's really important that we have these salmon runs return um, for them.